Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Welcome to Duraman's educational series for industrial and decorative concrete flooring systems. The commonly used resins in the flooring industry are epoxy, polyurethane, polyaspartic, polyurea, vinyl esters, and methyl methacrylate, which is commonly referred to as an MMA. All of these resins are two-part systems. The resin is mixed with a hardener on site to harden and form a flooring system. MMA is an acrylic methacrylic ester. It is combined with organic peroxide. More technically, it is a catalyst rather than a hardener. It initiates a reaction that converts the liquid resin into a solid mass. The two distinct advantages of MMA-based resin floors are quick return to service and cold temperature cure. In most cases, epoxy and polyurethane based do not cure properly in temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Conversely, MMA-based floors can be installed in temperatures close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. These rapid curing systems are an ideal solution for interior and exterior installations in which minimal downtime is required. The low temperatures cure capability allows them to be used during cold weather and in freezers and coolers. They are highly resistant to UV light, staining and marring, and they do not chalk or yellow. For more than 35 years, methyl methacrylate acrylic reactive resins have been used in environments such as food processing plants, pharmaceutical facilities, and heavy industrial plants. MMA resin requires negative air movement to ensure proper curing. Blowing air directly across the surface of the MMA, positive air, is not advised as it will reduce the working time of the resin. The MMA odor may need to be vented outside of the project site occupied by other workers. There should not be any open flames in the vicinity of the work or in areas where the fumes can concentrate. Review SDS sheets before working with MMA resins. Always protect yourself and wear the appropriate OSHA approved respirator when working with these types of products. For exterior work or interior work in large open spaces such as a warehouse or large manufacturing processing area, negative air movement typically is not necessary to achieve proper cure, assuming the odor does not need to be vented. Smaller rooms will require setting up uh, negative air with explosion proof fans. On this panel, we are going to demonstrate MMA self-leveling mortar system. This system consists of an application of primer, which is then followed by a pigmented body coat, which is typically uh, applied at about an eighth of an inch thick. After that, you apply a top coat, which could either be clear or pigmented. Add Macrolix HOO, which is the hardener, to Macrolix P12 resin, following the mix ratios chart in the product data sheet. Mix material for two minutes using a slow speed drill and a jiffy mixer. Once the material is mixed, Pour the mixed resin in ribbons onto the substrate, uh, making sure to spread evenly using a notch squeegee. Now what's crucial is to apply it at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per mixed gallon. Once you've got it all uh, laid down with a notch squeegee, you're then going to back roll with a, with a medium nap, 3 eighths of an inch roller. Um, on very absorbent surfaces, that it may require two coats to get an even resin rich surface bond with the next layer. Optional is to broadcast lightly with silica and or colored quartz uh, aggregate at approximately five to 10 pounds per 100 square feet at the installer's discretion. Apply next layer only after the primer has completely hardened. This is the method to mix and apply the primer. You add the Macrolix uh, HOO hardener to the Macrolix P12 resin following the mix ratios charts which is provided in the, in the product data sheets. Mix the material for two minutes using a slow speed drill and a jiffy mixer. Once the material is thoroughly mixed, pour mix the mixed resin in ribbons onto the substrate. And once you've uh, distributed the material and poured it in ribbons, you're gonna use a notch squeegee to spread the material uniformly, making sure there is no puddles. What's really crucial with the system is to apply it at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per coat per gallon. Once you have it all uh, laid down with a notch squeegee, you're going to back roll with a medium nap, 3 eighths of an inch roller. On very absorbent surfaces, it may require two coats to get an even resin rich surface to bond with the next layer. Once you have the material down, you then broadcast lightly uh, with silica sand, 30 mesh, or colored quartz aggregate at approximate coverage rate of five to 10 pounds per 100 square feet. Um, after that, apply the next layer only after the primer has completely hardened. We're getting ready to install our Macrolix P12 MMA primer 
Remember, as part of the system, we have an MMA hardener, which is simply a powder that mixes into the uh, P12. Now, refer back to the uh, material data sheets because it's going to give you ratios uh, based on the ambient temperature. So, for example, we are, uh, we've determined that it's roughly 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the warehouse for the purpose of this video shoot. And we've determined that we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix four ounces of the MMA hardener based on the ambient temperature into the, uh, the Macrolix P12. So it's, it is very crucial that you follow the recommended charts that's provided in the, in the tech data sheets. So there's our four ounces. Now, anytime you're working with these materials, it is really, really important that you wear an OSHA approved respirator. Um, obviously for the purpose of this video only, I can't talk while I have this on. So please um, adhere to your safety when using these types of products. Now the first thing that we've done is we've taken the lid off of the, the Macrolix P12 and we've previously agitated with a slow speed Jiffy mixer. And the reason for that is, is uh, when the product is sitting on the shelf or on a pallet, the solids tend to settle out. So we want to get a homogeneous mix. Since we've done that and we're working in a small area, we've decantered off exactly one gallon. So this is all already mixed and then dispersed into this bucket. So we have one gallon of the uh, Macrolix P12. Now we have our four ounces of the MMA hardener in which we're going to mix into this, uh, this volume right here. Keep in mind the quantity, we got the quantity which was provided in the technical data sheets. It's really crucial that you look at the ambient temperature and it'll give you the chart or the guideline of how much MMA hardener mixes into this Macrolix P12. So we've determined we have our volume, just double check. I'm at four ounces here, you can see right here. And now we're going to mix for two minutes at slow speed. While we're mixing this, let's talk about using the, uh, the Macrolix monomer right here, which uh, basically has one function only, and that's to clean your tools. So during the installation, say uh, on a notch squeegee, for example, um, on a larger installation, if you had to clean your notch squeegee, what you would want to do is use this product. You would not never use a traditional solvent like acetone or xylene or denatured alcohol to clean your tools because what could happen is if it, there's residual with one of those solvents on a notch squeegee and it dripped onto your floor, it could re-emulsify the product. So for that reason, during the installation, you will only use this, uh, this monomer over here. Now, at the end of the installation, when you're done at the end of the day, certainly you could use a traditional solvent like I've mentioned to clean your tools. All right, we've mixed for two minutes. Now we're going to use the, uh, the Macrolix monomer to clean. Like I said, we don't want to do it on the substrate. We want to keep our substrate nice and clean. So I'm going to come over here and just simply use a traditional little chip brush and make sure our Jiffy mixer is clean and ready for the next batch. We've mixed our Macrolix P12 for two minutes. Now we're going to simply pour it into ribbons. And then we'll use our notch squeegee. Remember, at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per mixed gallon.
We've applied our material at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per mixed gallon. Now it's time to back roll. Now note, on, on a larger project, obviously you're not going to use a little 9 inch roller. You're going to use a much, much uh, larger 18 inch roller, which is uh, much more productive than, than we're using here. However, this is just a small little panel, as you can see here. So we're just back rolling it, making sure we don't have puddles. It is a good idea uh, on edges to have somebody cutting in or around any slab penetrations. Go ahead and have somebody cut in with a brush. We've just finished back rolling after our notch squeegee. Now it's time to apply the either silica sand or in this case, the coarse aggregate. So you're just looking for a consistent uniform coverage rate, like we said earlier, roughly five to 10 pounds per 100 square feet of material. No clumps, just uniformly distributed across the surface. It's a quick process, as you can see. On this panel, we're going to demonstrate the MMA self-leveling mortar body coat. Add self-leveling filler to the Macrolux B18 and mix thoroughly for one minute using a slow speed drill and jiffy mixer. Add the MMA pigment to one quart per five gallons of MMA resin and continue mixing Add the Macrolux hardener to the B18 MMA resin following mix ratio chart, which is uh, provided in the technical data sheets. Continue mixing for approximately one to two minutes. Typical slurry mix ratio is 15 to 20 pounds of self-leveling filler, which is the equivalent of about one to 1.5 gallons per gallon of MMA resin, depending on the temperature and the desired thickness. Pour the mixed resin slurry in ribbons and spread evenly with a gauge rake or trowel at the specified thickness, which is generally about an eighth of an inch thick or thicker as required. Once you've uh, poured the ribbons, you're gonna go ahead and immediately back roll uh, with a loop roller or a spiny roller. Apply the next layer of the top coats only after the resin is completely hardened. All right, we're getting ready to uh, mix our Macrolix B18 um, for our self-leveling um, mortar body coat and what we've done is we've already pre-measured out our quantities for this size panel. So we have one gallon of the uh, Macrolix B18 right here and then we've already calculated the uh, appropriate amount of the filler. So now what we'll do is we'll take our filler, we'll mix it into the Macrolix that we've already pre-calculated here. We'll mix that for one minute and you're going to always want to pigment this system. So once we've mixed the filler for a minute, we're going to go ahead and uh, take our pre-measured pigment. If you recall, we showed the, showed the quart size, which is the equivalent of five gallons. So we calculated out since we're only mixing one gallon quantities, and this is the amount of uh, pigment that we'll mix into this for an additional one minute. And then, if you remember, we've already discussed, we've looked at the, uh, the technical data sheets for the temperature, which dictates how much of the hardener that we uh, need for the one gallon quantity. So it's an ambient temperature in the warehouse of roughly 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've calculated out roughly four ounces of our hardener. We'll then mix the hardener into this uh, pre-measured pre, uh, other quantities and we'll mix for a minimum of two to three minutes. And once we've got a nice cohesive, thoroughly mixed material, we'll pour it in ribbons and I'll use a, um, a gauge rake and I'll self-level it on the whole panel and then the last step will be to uh, use a porcupine roller and just uh, run the porcupine roller over this material. So we're going to get busy mixing. One last thing, as uh, we talked about, safety is not a game. Um, always wear an OSHA approved respirator when working with these types of materials. Um, obviously, I don't have it on right now because I've got to talk to the camera, but I will wear it when I start to mix.
All right, the last thing to mix is our MMA hardener, which we talked about the quantity, which is four ounces, and this is based on 60 degree ambient temperature, which is provided in the technical data sheets. Um, just another very important factor. So you never want to have a pause in the delivery of this material if you're doing this on a large job. Um, the last thing you want to do is waste time in between batches. So for that reason, we have, um, we have the pigment, the filler, and the MMA all mixed. And the only thing that's lacking is our MMA hardener. And then we have a second batch that's ready to go. So once again, we've already mixed the, um, the Macrolux B18. We've mixed uh, the filler. And then we've also have the pigment. It's already pre-mixed. So when I start to dump this into a ribbon after I've mixed the hardener in here for two to three minutes, we'll immediately start mixing the second batch. So there's no downtime in between batches. Super important. You can't have a cold joint in between this. So you have to have a constant flow of material, whether you're mixing five gallon quantities or in our case, one gallon quantities. Okay, so we've mixed our first batch. Just gonna simply pour it out in a ribbon. From there, we will now, you can see how nicely it self levels. Uh, we have a nice thoroughly mixed batch here. And right about now, we're gonna start mixing our second batch with the hardener. So by the time I gauge rake this into place, I'll be ready for the second batch. All right, we're finishing up our last little panel here with the gauge rake. It's leveling out nice. Immediately, as soon as I get done here, I'm gonna get the uh, porcupine roller and just give this a nice back roll, and that's it for this, uh, for this step. So obviously on a large job, you're not gonna have uh, a one-person crew. You're gonna have multiple workers that are simultaneously, while one person's gauge raking it, the next person is coming back and, and uh, back rolling with a porcupine roller. So I'm just gonna hit it one time this way to get right up on the edges. And then we'll come through and hit it this way. All right, that uh, concludes the application here on our MMA. Um, one last thing, if you're concerned about uh, coefficient of friction or slip resistance, you might consider broadcasting a 30 mesh uh, dried silica sand and or a non-skid additive just to give you a little bit of a slip resistance. All right, we're getting ready to apply our top coat to our previously installed MMA systems. We're gonna be using Macrolix S26, which is Duraman's medium viscosity clear top coat. The product can be uh, pigmented if necessary add Macrolux HOO MMA hardener to Macrolux S26 following the mix ratio, which is in the product data sheets. You're gonna to wanna to mix the material for approximately two to three minutes using a slow speed uh, mixing drill and a jiffy blade. Once it's thoroughly mixed, you're gonna pour mixed resin in ribbons and then spread with a notch squeegee um, or trowel at a rough coverage rate of 65 to 100 square feet per mixed gallon. Once you have it out, you're gonna immediately back roll with a medium nap 3 8 inch roller, high quality roller. Um, and if necessary, in the event that you did require a second coat, you would want the uh, second coat uh, to be applied only after the first uh, top coat was completely cured and hardened, 
reason for that, perhaps you had a blemish or maybe uh, some sand, you had a clump of sand, something that you weren't happy with would be the only reason to apply a second top coat. All right, the S26 is thoroughly mixed. Now it's time to dump it onto the uh, substrate, into the ribbon. And then of course what I'll do is I'll use the notch squeegee and uh, get this all dispersed evenly. And then we'll follow up with 3 8 of an inch nap roll or back roll. <laughs> 